And then to make matters even more interesting, right? To make matters more, 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 more interesting. Uh, <laughs> where is it? This guy, not sure if you're familiar with him, but boom, boom, this guy, Stephen Miller, former White House aide, has now contracted COVID himself. He's sort of like a pantomime villain of politics in the USA. I just remember him having some epic, epic interviews. And I'm going to get one of a compilation of his interviews here so you can get an introduction of what Stephen Miller is about <laughs> and why some people might not, um, why some people are probably not paying praying for his recovery as they were kind of battling with their conscience regarding Trump. I don't think it's the same sort of rationale as happening with Stephen Miller. But here's Stephen Miller, in case you don't know who he is. Wait a minute. That's different than saying you can't Jim, Let me ask you a question. Of hope to the world. Question, Jim, don't, no, don't be condescending. Um, Jay, Jay. Stephen. <laughs> White House advisor Steve Miller has battled the media in his coverage of President Trump. He, yeah, he he loves Trump. He's like one of those lapdogs. Like, fair enough, you're like a staunch... I, I get it if you're a staunch Republican and you just have to, you know, support the guy that's in the White House, support the guy that's leading your party. It is what it is. You just have to fall in line. But he really... I think he's like... You know those people that had quite fringe ideas in the Republican Party anyway and now they see Trump and he's sort of like their kind of you know their Trojan horse to sort of push in some of their more fringe ideas the ideas that maybe aren't you know necessarily the um, uh, the most politically correct ideas let's say in that regard right they're still maybe politically sound in some respects but they're not politically correct in some way shape or form but yeah he he's his affection for Trump is knows no bounds and some would argue that he probably might he might be more of a favor of Trump's than Trump's own children actually especially some of his sons. Here are three examples of Steve Miller's fiery exchanges with the press. You can be as condescending as you want as part of your MO, but listen. And again, stop, stop it again. I don't, actually, I don't actually mind him when he gets back with Jim Acosta because I think Jim Acosta can be a bit of a tosser in it in that regard. Um, you know, he, he is kind of, um, he kind of gives me the impression that he kind of wants to be the star of the show, right? Um, which is super annoying in that regard. But the other, the other exchanges that he has are just like, it's just imagine being... Imagine having any interest in politics in the US and then turning on your TV and seeing, you know, people, you know, a host of a supposed impartial uh, show on the news grilling the guy in this way. And then, of course, the guy getting grilled, being so competitive, it's just not conducive to a good discussion about politics whatsoever. I have 24 seven. I, I have no idea why you you're attacking have, me. Well, I'll my, explain my, to my, you. My yeah, point I'll is, tell you why I'm attacking Steve Bannon, you. Steve Bannon, 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 I'll tell you why I'm Bannon, shitting on you. <laughs> the travel ban. What, he but helped, I, he I'm, helped I'm, pull, pull I'm out. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, let me that's just, one of the Steven, news Steven, items Steven. in the book. Steve, oh yeah, that's he's he's the orchestrator of the travel ban. About how the travel ban was written. Let me. Steve Bannon didn't push the travel ban. If you would let me. Steve Bannon would let me. If you let me ask this question. No, because you have 24 hours of negative anti-Trump hysterical coverage on this network that led in recent weeks is some spectacularly think, embarrassing false reporting I think the from viewers your network. right now can ascertain no, the viewers hysterical. are entitled my, to have my, three months of the truth why don't you just give me three minutes to tell you the truth about Donald Trump that I know Jim have you honestly Jim have you honestly <laughs> never met <laughs> that was a pretty <laughs> he's a mad guy he's a mad guy let's see when we get Jim Acosta at a an immigrant from another country who speaks English outside of Great Britain and Australia? Is that your personal experience? Oh, you got another good strong. But that's not what you said. And it shows it shows your cosmopolitan bias. And I just want to say engineer the racial and ethnic flow of people into this country. Yeah, this that policy. is one of the most outrageous, insulting, ignorant, and foolish things you've ever said. He might have he, he might have legitimately one of the most punchable faces in the world. He looks both really young and really old. He saw that Benjamin Button like caught in the you know I mean he's yeah he saw that Benjamin Button that's sort of like caught in purgatory. He doesn't know which way he's gonna go, isn't it? It's sort of confusing. He's got an old man face, but then young man skin, but then he's got old man hair and he's got old man eyes. And then he's got old man views or something. Right? He, he, he's got like the kind of really odd fringe um, views that you'd kind of attribute to somebody really old in age, right? Somebody that's sort of seen a lot of things, been a lot of places and they've just summarized, you know what? I don't like them Jews. I don't like them immigrants, right? He's got that kind of opinion of him, but he's really young. He's like 32 or something. I think he might be, yeah, he's probably a little bit older now. At the time, I remember him, him being about 32. But some of his exchanges on interviews on, online were just... They were a box office, man. It was so intriguing just to watch somebody, you know, that's meant to be a White House aide essentially sparring uh, for the pres on the president's behalf with some of the, you know, news anchors on some of these news shows in America. ...is that our opponents, the media, and the whole world will... Opponents. <laughs> ...begin to take action. 
Well, wait till you unite the country. Our country are very substantial and will not be questioned. And that danger will be eliminated because of some enforcement action that we are going to take in the coming days. And that's something we should celebrate, not criticize. The power of the president to exclude aliens in the national interest. But they, they say, did not even, they they did not even address that. The history of reviewability the courts, the, here. Now, our All right. emphasis is on deporting and removing criminal aliens who pose a threat to public safety. But he, it's a funny thing about him too. He's like the guy in the TV series where he's the really weaselly, dweeby, sort of like backstabby, snaky guy that's essentially um, responsible. And, you know, he's an architect of chaos in that regard, right? But he always manages to survive, right? He's like little finger that never dies. That's the, what he is. So he looks dweeby. He looks like, you know, essentially if you, if you touched him or if you sat the back of his head, you know, you might essentially sprain his neck. But he could legitimately, legitimately have you buried. Allegedly, I'd imagine so, right? Again, this is me talking hypothetically. I don't know anything. Please don't come after me, CIA. But I would imagine so, right? He can press a button. He can put a few calls in and you wouldn't see your mum again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> legitimately. So big up Stephen Miller, I say. <laughs> Get well soon. I don't want no smoke. Oh, Jesus Christ.